it's not just Wemby and Luca. Hello, I'm Emmett Ryan, and welcome to Ball in Europe. Well, the NBA season is nearly here, so as you may be aware, there's quite a lot of Euros playing in the NBA this season. Loads of them, and they're up for most of the awards that matter when it comes to the NBA this year. So I'm going to naturally do what the video title suggests and assess the chances of the Euros in each of the awards. And spoiler alert, Yes, we'll be finishing with MVP. Of course, we're finishing with MVP. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I think it's actually up there, isn't it? But it always helps. And let's get to the first one, the one with the least Euro interest, the sixth man of the year. So this one begins with an immediate question mark slash qualifier as in what do we call a Euro? Because if we're going by someone who has come originally from Europe and has played for European team, be it a club or national level, then there really is no one in contention at all. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovic at 40 to 1 is comfortably the uh, best shot here. Uh, I'm a huge Bogey fan. I think anyone who's ever followed the site knows that I adore watching Bogey play. He's great. But uh, 40 to 1, that's not exactly saying contender, right? So we're going to go, what if we're going to accept that Dante Di Vincenzo is Italian? He hasn't played for Italy yet, but he has been so outspoken and clear in saying he wants to play basketball for Italy internationally and is going through the passport process and all that. Purely because it's six man, if this is MVP, we would not be making this exception, just so we're clear. Purely because it's six man, I'm going to make the exception. Dante, 14 to 1. Uh, I think he's in a good position to do it. He's not the favourite, but like, this, the, you know, the four, sixth man has always got a bit of a hustle and a bit of a bustle. So it really depends on how much of a role he can create for himself off the bench, essentially, this season. He's shown he's a guy who knows his own game, who's uh, reasonably controlled in how he plays, but also plays with quite a lot of confidence. So he's certainly a contender. But of all the awards, uh, I think, by far, where I think a not-European is most likely to win, this is it. And I say that even more than the next award. So Rookie of the Year, you normally assume, like, the high draft picks are in contention, and the top two are both European, both French, in fact. Zachary Rizaka and Alexar. And then you've got Matas Buzelis, also there as well as Lithuanian, obviously. All three are up there according to the bookies, in the running for Rookie of the Year. And I think all three will have a chance to make a real case to win it. Like, they're all going to be in positions where I think they'll see enough of the court and enough of the ball to make enough of a contribution to win it. Like, we're not going to see a runaway like Wemby last year. I don't think that. But I don't think any of them are going to win it. Because, like, I've been saying this since back in the spring, uh, and I'd be the first to say I find college basketball very hard to watch. But over preseason, I think most of the world has recognized that, yes, there is a place for Zach Eddy in the modern NBA. I've forgotten who wrote it, but someone even wrote an article or at least a tweet of a high-profile person saying he's shown he's going to be a problem. Actually, I think it might have been even in Z Tom Zilder's newsletter. Uh, but yeah, he has shown that he's not just a lumbering giant. He is very, very, very high IQ, as in... What you want from a big man who may not be the most mobile alive is exceptional knowledge of what he can and can't do, of his placement, of his movement, so you can basically minimize his flaws. And we've seen that in preseason from Zach Eddy. And now you look at what's feeding him and who's feeding him and what type of way the Grizz play, and I go, this, is, this guy's going to be a problem. And I think Zach, uh, if he stays healthy uh, for most of the season, like, you know, hits the minimum game requirements and all that, it's going to be very hard for any of the big three Euros uh, to really sort of crack and break him from that position. Uh, obviously, it would mean a Canadian wins, and that's always nice because I like Canada. I have a lot of friends there, have old work connections to Canada. But yeah, so you might be going, really? It's like, yeah, like long term, do I think Buzelis or Sar or especially Rizaker can reach a higher level than Eddie? I think so, yeah. But I think when it comes to season one, Zach Eddy, I've been referring to him as a griffin rather than a unicorn casually, my friends, because a griffin's still a ferocious beast. It's just not got the range of a unicorn. Uh, yeah, I think season one, not going to be a Euro winning it. So we're two awards in. We're two Euros not winning. Uh, this is going to get better, right? 
You're darn right it is. We're going to go with the first of the awards where Victor Wimbanyama is by far and away the favourite, although it's the one where he's less favoured, and I'm going to explain a little bit as to the why. So Wemby is up uh, as favoured according to all the bookies for most improved player. Most improved player, by its definition, requires showing a leap in performance. And the obvious challenge for Wemby is that his performance is already really, really high after season one. So demonstrating the leap is going to be the hard part. And also, that no one has ever won Rookie of the Year and MIP, uh, never mind in back-to-back -back years, just in general. No one's ever won both. And so that's obviously a huge, huge challenge for Wemby to get over, especially with the way it's voted on. The voters are expecting someone they didn't see, they didn't honour for their early contributions already before. Despite that, the market still thinks he's going to win it, just not by the level they think they're going to win the others. I think there'll be a lot of noise around whether or not Wemby should win MIP this year, but I think once he's got that all-star nod, which he will get, and once he shows out a couple of flashes at that weekend, which I think he will... And obviously with all these awards, including this, assuming he stays healthy, I think that'll be enough to get people over the hump of, can we really say most improved? And uh, yeah, I think uh, Wemby uh, should win most improved. Uh, and like I said, with all of these the qualifiers, assuming they stay healthy, I am not going to be making any guesses based on if someone goes down, because that's kind of cruel and mean. I don't do that. Like I try to be nice to people, you know? So first year award off the board, Victor Wembanyama uh, for MIP. Not the last year award, and certainly not the last for that guy. Let's get to the obvious one. So Defensive Player of the Year, it really feels like it's Victor Wembanyama's to lose to the point of he could almost have a drop in production from last season, and it's hard to see him not winning it, which is insane to say. Obviously, I'm not expecting a drop in production. I'm expecting production to even improve uh, substantially at that. But even if somehow, say, he took himself out of the MIP race on a production level, his production alone last year, uh, you know, his blocks, his stocks, uh, and everything else, like, he's just, you know, the alien for a reason. So, uh... I'm just going to just check the odds for one second here. Not for that, because, like I said, I'm picking Wemby to win it. I want to check just how far back number two is. Uh, so, it's far. It's really, really far. Uh, Chad Holmgren and Badman Adebayo, uh, for context, Victor is a 6-4 on. That's 4-6 slash six for those of you who don't understand gambling speak. Chad and Bam are both at 14-1. to one. Rudy Gobert, who's kind of made the award his own, uh, despite not exactly being loved by his peers, 16 to 1. Like he won it last year and he's all the way out to 16 to 1. That to me is pretty, pretty wild. So it tells you just how much the market, and you, by the way, you rarely see odds on for end of year awards at the start of a season in any sport. Uh, but there's Wemby. It's like, yeah, he's going to win GPO Y, right? And like the bookies don't want any of that noise at all. So yeah. Wemby winning DPOI. Uh, that's two awards for Victor Wembanyama at the end of the year. Ignoring, obviously, I think he's going to make uh, all defensive again. He'll make an all NBA team, I think. Uh, you know, especially if he gets the MIP as well. Um, you know, he's going to he's going to be an all star. He's going to get a lot, a lot of, a lot of. He's, he's going to need a new trophy cabinet even before he's come close to a ring. Uh, probably close to even playing a play in game. Never mind a playoff game. So yeah, you know, Wemby's going to have a big trophy cabinet end of the season. None of us are surprised by this. Let's get to it. The one that's the toughest to call, MVP. Here's the wild bit for you. Victor is eighth favorite for MVP in his second season on a team that's not expected to make the postseason. I mean, wow. Obviously, I don't consider him a contender. He's 3-3-1. Uh, he's out of the picture in my book. But the three Euros we are going to talk about today have three very different narratives. So, Luke, I'll just go through the uh, top uh, five in odds for you all here, because I think that's relevant. So, Luka Doncic is the favorite, 7-2. Nikola Jokic, reigning MVP, 19-4. Shea Gilgis Alexander, 11-2. Giannis Antetokounmpo, 17-2. And Ant, Anthony Edwards, 14-1. Now... The three euros to me are all in the mix, but one I'm flat out not betting on is, and I don't really bet, but even if I, if I was a better, I'm not betting on, is uh, Nikola Jokic. And before all the Nuggets fans and all the people from Serbia jump on me, this is a respective of whether or what stats Nikola Jokic puts up this season. I can't see the voters going yet again to him, maybe four and five seasons. I just don't see that happening. Like, he would need to be putting up numbers that are so eye-popping and also 
so far above everyone else, like way further above than he's ever been before and anyone else in MVP voting for him to get it. And I just don't see the vote of saying yes on the Joker this season. I really don't. I'm shocked he's second favourite, to be honest, because I figured that factor alone should give should knock him off a, quite a bit. Luca's favourite again. Like, it's not his first season going in his favourite, and it won't be his last. Uh, will it be his first when he wins it? Well, a lot of that comes down to Clay uh, and Kyrie, because the Mavs had a pretty good season overall last year, but they were running Luca really, really hard. So obviously you want to see Luca have high production, but you also need to see that win number go up because his his counting stats, so to speak, so not his averages, his counting stats, well, actually those were technically his averages, but not his per 40 averages, uh, are going to, you would imagine, if the Mavs are being sensible, drop slightly, purely because his minutes per game should drop considerably. Like, they should be using him a bit less to preserve him more for the postseason. Because, uh, again, if you're Dallas and you've got a choice between, you know, winning a championship and winning Luke MVP, it's not a debate. You're going for that title. And to me, it's like, you know, okay, so what's that mean? What can Luca do? Is it, it's Effectively, it's like, you know, win share. It's like impact he has and the number of wins Dallas gets. So there's that factor. So he is favorite, and there is that. I'm skipping Yanis for a second, but bear with me. The two non-Euros in that debate. So you got Shea, very, very good position. But the one thing I think is being overlooked slightly with Shea is that he had an exceptional year last year. He has to effectively supersede that with possibly a bit of room to spare as well to, I think, get it. Because uh, he's going to be essentially in a similar role to last season with a very similar side with very high expectations. I don't think it's as straightforward a path for Shea, the third favourite, as it may look at the outset. We shall see how the voters decide on that. And I'm a little surprised he's actually at this value. I thought 14 to 1, uh, which are kind of the same as Chet for uh, D DP. Uh, I think that's a bit long. Uh, I'd have thought 10 would have been fair on him. Uh, just to be clear, even nine, uh, you know, and uh, longer than Giannis, just to be clear, but like not a lot longer uh, than, and I, when I say younger than Giannis, I mean longer than the price on Giannis, because I'm getting back to that in a second, uh, because like he's in a position where I think he could really show out this season and probably have more of the ball, more opportunities to push that essentially and, you know, get in that position to be a real MVP contender, even at this relatively young stage of his career, uh, much like Lucas at the young stage of his career as well, just to be clear. But the one that I think is offering the biggest value here, and the one I think we need to watch out for, is Giannis. And you go, what? Well, we're a few years removed from Giannis Antetokounmpo, so there isn't going to be this whole, ah, uh, he won it recently factor holding him back, like, you know, Jokic, basically, uh, or even Embiid, although Embiid not playing back-to-backs means he's almost certainly not going to reach the minimum game requirement. And you look at the situation with the Bucks and with Giannis. So there's been a while since Giannis won. It's like not that long in real time, but long enough that the voters aren't sick of voting for Giannis. And the Bucks, obviously, things didn't go well with the start of the Doc Rivers thing last season. Now you've got Dame and Giannis sort of on the same page. I've had an offseason. Doc, if he can get it together, has had the offseason as well. And you start to go, well, if Giannis can start doing MVP grade numbers and the Bucks get the wins to go with that, suddenly that momentum builds. And the case for Giannis, you know, doing it, being it, being the man, um, being the best player in the MVP, NBA argument, or at least the MVP, because obviously the best player alive is Nikola Jokic. Uh, you know, suddenly, suddenly that gets interesting. And I think there's a real narrative there that could drive Giannis up. That's actually why I was surprised. I think 17 to 2, 17 to 2 which is 8.5 to 1 is a bit long for Giannis. I wouldn't have put him longer than six or six or six or five. I was going to say six or seven, and seven would be too short for me, too long for me. I'd have gone five or six, because I think there's such a potential narrative for Giannis' MVP case this year. I think it's really, really, really strong. But who's going to win MVP? Well, I'm knocking out Jokic straight away. Uh, I think he might put up, I think he will put up stellar, stellar numbers, and I think it won't matter. Uh, sorry to the Nuggets fans and Serbians and anyone else who loves Joker, uh, who doesn't love Joker. Uh, I just don't think he's going to be in it. So I'm knocking him out straight away. Luke, I think, will do enough to be in the contention for it, be in the discussion. So will Shay. Uh, if I'm going to say no on Ant. I feel there'll be just enough for people to say one more year for Ant. Uh, but I'm going to keep Yanis in it. Shay, I feel there is a little bit too much pressure on, uh, or sorry, too much requirements. 
So then it's a Luca versus Yanis fight. Uh, but if you got Shade disputing it, it's not a straight Luca versus Yanis fight. And believe me, Yanis needs this dispute, disputing, disputation, sir. This disputation. And uh, if you get to that, then I'm going to go with Luca. Yeah. Uh, for all that, having thought it out, this is live thinking in my head, Luca will win MVP this season. I am st 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 putting it out there, stating it now. And honestly, I did do the assessment and working it out in my head right there and then. I hadn't decided before I started this video. I decided the other awards, but I hadn't decided that one before I decided this video. Uh, you may have noticed I didn't pick a six man this year. Uh, well, let's go Naz. Okay. All righty, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. It has always been a pleasure. We'll be back on Friday, but of course, check out our shorts as well during the week. And until then, please subscribe and I will see you soon.